move. He talked with your feet. Many generations now, we have suffered. The Washichu we spoke to, but they don't hear. They're deaf. The women, the children, the old ones, they suffer. You from the cities. You are our warriors. Our warriors. In the sacred way. You because you couldn't do it. Well, first of all, the whole so-called military system of the white man's military is built, uh, well, primarily your special forces, your, 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 your Green Berets, your Army Rangers, your Navy SEALs, yep. even the Marine Corps, the Recon Marine Corps, all your so-called top special forces of the military. And when you go in the military, because we have brothers amongst us that was in the military, yeah. okay? And I know people who were actually in special forces. I have a friend who's a Gadite, okay? I'm not gonna mention his name. He's not in the truth, though. He's a brother that I used to work with, okay? An older brother, he's a Vietnam vet. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I know okay? what I'm talking about. Okay, well, I'll say his Indian name, Makwa. His, his native name is Makwa. I know who you're talking okay? about. Okay, he's a real, you know, outside of the brotherhood, he's a so-called friend of mine it, he's in the world, he don't know nothing about the truth, but the Spirit of the Lord has always been on this guy to be good to me. Who knows, the Lord can have mercy on this guy. But anyways, this brother, he's an older brother, he's a Gadite, he's an Ojibwe Indian, and he's a Vietnam veteran, okay? And me and the guy, how we met, we used to work together for like eight years, we worked together doing carpentry, doing doing carpentry, doing carpentry right? and we ended up becoming very tight friends, the Spirit bonded us, yeah. and uh, pretty much, this brother was in the special forces in Vietnam. He was he's, he was in the Rangers. He was a he was a uh, he was an army ranger, but he's an Indian anyway. So he already had the skills. But when you go into the military and when you go into special forces, they even tell you when you go into boot camp all these skills that we're going to teach you is things that uh, we learned from the Native Americans. It was adapted from the Native American culture the Native Americans' warfare, okay? Guerrilla warfare, which is guerrilla warfare. The whites didn't know about that. They got that from us. How did they learn? They learned from other Uncle Tomahawk Indians that taught them how to fight guerrilla warfare. And then in turn, you had certain white men that picked up and adapted the Indian styles of fighting because they saw that it was effective and they taught other white men. And that's how the white men got their whole military system set up today. It's all about the home, the paint. When you go in the white man's military, they paint up. They put the camouflage paint on. That came from us. That's right. The white man didn't used to paint their faces hundreds of years ago. The Indian people, we did that. So the white man got his whole style of warfare from us. That's okay? Right. His whole his whole style of warfare, warfare came from Israel. And, and mainly the, uh, the tribe you mentioned, Gad. The tribe Gad and Reuben. Gad and Reuben. Let me see, I'm, I'm trying to find something here real quick, okay. real quick. 
Okay, the truth is coming out. And that's what I mean. That's why, you know, for these guys that can't see or don't believe that the Native Americans are part of the lost tribes of Israel, this, that I said, they're blinded. That's why uh, Isaiah 29, the Lord, the Lord got them blinded, man. Yahweh, Yahweh Shai have them blinded. Why? Because they're not of the Lord's elect. And this ain't for them. You understand? We're going to push this truth out no matter what, man. And we're going to continue to push this truth out. We don't give a damn about scoffers, man. Yeah. The scripture says scoffers shall come. Yeah. All right? I got something real quick. Uh, uh, First Chronicles 12 and 37. And on the other side of Jordan, of the Reubenites. Reubenites? Who are the Reubenites? I'm a Reubenite. Okay? Uh, the brother Elder Manasseh, he's a Reubenite. Right. Reuben is the so-called Seminole Indians from Florida and also out in Oklahoma. Okay? Because when... The Spaniards first came into Florida, you had different tribes down there, tribes known as the Timacua, the Calusa, and the Appalachians. That was before the Creek Indians came down into Florida. But those so-called Indians of Florida, the original inhabitants of Florida, which were the Timacua, the Calusa, and the Appalachians, that, those were Reubenites, a whole separate tribe of Israel, but they were also known as so-called Native American Indians, okay? And later on in history, they became known as Seminole Indians because the Creek Indians, which were known as Gad, but some of them Creek Indians probably had, Reuben and Gad were all mixed in together, yeah, man. That's right. But the Spirit of the Lord had it where the tribe of Reuben ended up dwelling down in Florida. The word uh, Seminole is a Creek word that means runaway because when the Creeks ran down into Florida, running from Andrew Jackson, and they called them those runaway Indians, Creek, uh, uh, Seminole, runaway. But when the Creeks got down there, they started integrating with the Indians that were already there. The Timacua and the Calusa and the Appalachians, the Creeks came together and they integrated with them. And they all became known Seminole Indians. So amongst the so-called Seminole Indians, some of them were Gad, some of them were Reuben, some of them were Judah. Yep. Because the runaway slaves ran down there and the Seminole Indians, we took in the runaway slaves. That's right. Okay? But you could tell Reuben by the spirit. Yep. Because Reuben is unstable. Reuben is undescribed. That's right. Also, Reuben too, Reuben has a certain look. You can kind of tell. It's funny. I mean, all they say all Indians look alike, right? But amongst the Seminole Indians, we do have those. You can tell a Reubenite when you see one, man, from Gad. It's spiritual. It's a spiritual thing. It's something you got to know. But the Reubenites are the so-called Seminole Indians. And also, too, the Seminole Indians are Reuben. We're known as the unconquered. Why? Because when the white man came down to old, to subdue the lands of Flo known today as Florida, we fought them devils to a standstill, and we never signed any treaties. One of our great chiefs, Chief Osceola, a Reubenite, and also uh, another one of our great chiefs, Wildcat. Okay, his name was Coco Chief, and uh, uh, his 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 war partner, which was John Horse, another Reubenite, and then you had another Reubenite brother, Billy Bowlegs, man. These brothers fought, and we wouldn't stop until we were dead, man. And we went down into the swamps, and we adapted to the swamps, and they became home. Today, we look at the swamps as being a home. Yeah. Really, we weren't living in the swamps. We were living in other areas of Florida. But when Andrew Jackson and the United States Army came in, they yeah. pushed us down into the swamps. But then our people adapted to the swamps. Now today, the Seminole Indians, man, the swamp is home. We love the swamp. We're known as Swamp Boys or Gator Boys, man. They got a show on TV called Gator Boys. Fucking crackers that came down there and learned from our people mm -hmm. how to wrestle alligators and survive in the swamp. We're the real Gator Boys, man. Yeah. How to catch alligators. They learned that from the Seminole Indians, man. If you see a white man catching alligators, he learned, he came down to the Hollywood or Big Cypress Reservation and he was trained by our tribe how to do that. Okay? You white people want to fucking take everything to yourself, man. They got the show Gator Boys. Yeah, yeah. The only yeah. show is Crackers. Yep. Over there hunting them alligators. You learn. Well, the, well, the one show, they work, for, they work for my tribe. They work for the Seminole tribe of Florida. On the reservation. But they, but, but they try to push them Crackers. Yep. That's what they do. Every so often they show the, the, the Seminole brothers on that. Yep. But they mainly push them crackers, man. That's right. With alligator claws around their neck. Like they're Seminole Indians or something, man. You white people are the goddamn devil, man. Why am I? Go ahead, brother. First Chronicles 12 and 37. And on the other side of Jordan, of the Reubenites, 
and the Gadites, and of the half tribe of Manasseh, with all manner of instruments. The half tribe of Manasseh, Manasseh, the so called Cubans. And the Cubans is warriors too, man. Oh, hell yeah. A lot of those top boxers are Cuban, the Cuban yeah. boxers, man. They're tough too. They were some of the greatest box. Showing they Manasseh, the Cubans, they had that warrior spirit. Manasseh know how to throw them hands, boy. In the Olympics, they be giving Judah, Benjamin, and Levi all kind of fucking problems in them boxing rings. That's right. Them Cuban boxers, they be giving Judah, Benjamin, and Levi all kind of fucking problems. And be whooping their ass too. That's right. It says, uh, on the other side of Jordan of the Reubenites and and the and the Gadites and of the half tribe of Manasseh, with all manner of instruments of war for the battle. That's right, man. 120,000. Reuben, we had them weapons, baby. That's right. Bow and arrow, tomahawks, knives, lances. We had all that, man. And slings, spring shots, blow guns. Okay? Messing them crap up. Darts. Yeah, well, the blow guns. The darts came out of the yeah. blow guns. Blow the blow gun. gun is a weapon of the Seminole Indians. We use blow guns. Yep. Okay? Some of us still use them to this day for hunting and warfare, man. Look at that. And guerrilla warfare tactics. And actually, when the white man came down into Florida, there was a documentary I saw that the white man even admitted this. When they went to try to subdue the Seminole Indians of Florida, that was really the first time that the white man, they compared that to Vietnam. Hmm. How when the whites went into Vietnam and that jungle warfare, well, they were not equipped for that jungle warfare. That's, That's right. why the whites were getting their ass kicked over in Vietnam. But they were saying that the Seminole Wars was a prelude to Vietnam. That was the first time that the whites were really getting their ass kicked in jungle warfare. When you go down to, to the to the glades, man, which I call home, the Florida Everglades, that's just like being in Vietnam. Mm. Certain parts of that swamp, that's jungle down there, man. Yeah, jungle. There's a tropical atmosphere. Jungle, you got them insects to be dealing with, snakes to be dealing with, alligators to be dealing with. Um, you got the heat and the humidity to be that's dealing right. with. That's right. And our people call the glades home. We're comfortable down there, man. You crackers, man, you can't deal with that. Some of you niggas couldn't deal with that. That's true. You niggas sitting up there talking shit. Come down to the glades, man. See if you could last one day down by Lake Okeechobee. Just take you right along the street, right along the river of Lake Okeechobee. Like you dumb niggas that's talking shit. Talking all this bullshit, man. You so tough and rough living in the big city, you faggots. Come on down to Florida and spend a night, camp out one night in Lake Okeechobee, man. Down by Lake Okeechobee. You fucking bitches, man. You be running back for Chicago or New York City or wherever you from, man. <laughs> Go ahead. It says, all these men of war that could keep rank came with a perfect rank. See, we had a ranking system. Israel yeah. was set up in the military. And I tell you what, amongst the Indians, each man was free. Each warrior was free, but there was an order. And there was an order. You had your chiefs and you had your war chiefs or war captains. Yeah. And then you had the warriors that followed under the war captains, man. You had the you have what was called amongst the Indian people, we have what was called a red chief. What's a red chief? A red chief is a war chief. And the war chief answered to the principal chief. The principal chief was the ultimate elder or leader of the tribe. And our people were going off here in the East Coast. I'm gonna tell it like it is. We had we were, Gay and Reuben, we started going off over here on this side of the world. We set up women as as leaders. You have what was called the clan mother. Because I want to call it like it is in case somebody try to say, right. I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, amongst the Seminole Indians, we have what's called the clan mothers. And the clan mothers carry a lot of power. The clan mothers actually elect the chief. And they, they went off with that shit. They, they were but how was a woman going to have That's why we went down. We set up women as clan mothers. But I'm just breaking down the history. The Pequots. Yeah. They had clan mothers too. Yeah. The clan mothers made all the, all the de important decisions. And you couldn't go to war unless you had the okay from the... The chief couldn't declare war unless he had the okay from the clan mothers. If the clan mothers gave the chief the okay that it was okay to go to war, then we could go to war or make trade. If the whites came or if another tribe came and we wanted to trade with that tribe, we had to consult with the clan mothers. Then the clan mothers, and there were usually four primary clan mothers, or seven, or eight. Okay? Amongst the Cherokee, there were seven. Amongst the Seminole, you had eight primary clan mothers. 
Okay? This is fucking bullshit, man. The clan mothers made decisions of whether a guy was to be executed, whether you to be banished from the tribe, and the clan mothers could also, um, if, you, if, you, if you had a chief who was a man, the chief had to always be a man, though. If, let's say if the chief was doing the wrong things, the clan mothers had the power to vote that chief out and set a new chief in power. Which, all that was going off, but it's history. Yep. It went down, so I gotta speak on it. So it's, you get some asshole out there to try to say, oh, that guy don't really know Indian. I know fucking Indian history. Okay? Many generations now, we have suffered. The Washichu we spoke to, but they don't hear their death. The women, the children, the old ones, they suffer. You from the cities, you are our warriors. in the sacred way.